Uh, it's a different one. This is Sporty 137 earlier on in the race. Those are the lead pair taking each other out at that stage. And uh, the <laughs> track announcer getting very, very excited. Very excited, in fact. Mes amis, reprendre la course, which means, hey lads, the race is on again. And indeed it is. Car number 11 is second. And that is Stefan Spitz from Alsace. And right behind him is the leader, Thierry Paulin. Well, well, this is a Grand Prix. The blue flags have been waving, but it's not. So Paulin just punts him out of the way and uh, sidesteps from wreckage. Well, Paulin coming under pressure now. This is really what he doesn't need, I think. Uh, 11 behind him and with a vengeance. Citroen Visa leads. And Peugeot 205 tries to thump him into timekeepers. Just missing it. In third place, although you won't see it now, I don't think the, uh, the director knows the battle when he sees one, is car 58, which may even still be moving, who can say? Car 58... Nah, it's not. Nah, car 58's not moving. So, <laughs> scoreboard. There's car 68 still moving. That's that. Datsun. Unbelievably. Couldn't survive an MOT for the 10 years, but they can still race. Oh, Datsun punts it out brutally at last. Pink and yellow Citroen going the wrong way, but still Thierry Paulin continues. 23rd lap this is of an advertised no idea how long. 24th lap now. Still Thierry Paulin leads from Stefan Spitz. And they reckon 36 now is in third place. Well 19 still going, so he must be in the points. Oh! Massive, massive shunt, not that one, not car 11, although he's been rolled, but uh, just ahead of him on the left, car 97 there, thumped right up the banking, all the way up into the air and bounced down on its wheels, quite spectacular stuff, and look at this, oh, with no thought of his own safety, the ENG cameraman rushes in to see the second place man dragged out of the car, apparently in the... Uh, Ombrolio, there was a 25th and final lap for Thierry Paulin, who is the winner. Second place, well, I'd give it to him because he was a star. Number 11, upside down, therefore apparently can't qualify. Second place, I reckon, was uh, 36, Tebo. Don't know what he was driving, didn't ever see him. And uh, Guman, 92, in a Peugeot 205 with uh, many stripes and uh, as many dents, was third. So, uh, let's have a look again at 37 going out. Oh, 97 rather, and 11 going out. 97 oh, just really flew out of the camera's sight. And there was the star of the rolls, 48, in, in, in his Renault 5. 48 and 47, oh, two superstars. Superb stuff. Let's give them a name check because they really deserve it. Oh, they had to be brothers. Michel and Gilles Delusier, 47 and 48. Yeah, they should get their start money and travel money back for being big, big entertainers. No question about it. Superstars. Car number eight being un unceremoniously bundled out of the action by uh, the man who turned out to be our winner, Thierry Paulin. Oh, look at that. The Delosiers. So those of you motorsport fans don't ever expect to see their names again, but uh, for this evening at least, uh, names to conjure with. So it is dead machinery everywhere, all the fires, well the fire has been safely put out and there's the car that caught, car number 96. Twice. And uh, everybody else, there's the, uh, the role that robbed car number 11. Stefan Spitz from Alsace of second place, having survived this earlier brush with a man who himself went out, car number 37. And 37 looking very competitive, one one of his heats and was second in another so uh, always a man to look for for victory despite his rather questionable choice of Italian 8 machinery it certainly didn't look as though it was going to be uh, nifty enough around the circuits but a real battle wagon and uh, stood Louis Gaillet very proud indeed until he was finally uh, taken out of the action by uh, our rival uh, 
Bruno Sevin in number 61. Sevin, whose brother Cyril actually didn't finish either, barely made it from the grid, and there is one of the uh, fabulous flying Frere de Lusier. Go on, it'll start. Go on. Just needs a bit of turning over, that's all. Super. Well, there you go. Ready for work on Monday. That's uh, the Delosier bodywork approach. Remind me not to take my car to them. Not that my car will make it this far at the moment. There he is. Sounds as good as it looks. A gem, one careful owner, and two nutter brothers, obviously. And there is uh, there is his brother's car. Wow, now it's it's hard to tell which is going to take more tea cuts to polish out the dents, isn't it, really? I'd, I have to say, actually, though, on merit, I think probably Michel Delosier, 47, we were looking at him there. The man who takes the biscuit. The man who takes the award, though, for the winner of the Grand Prix de Paris, Thierry Paulin, car number 46, a winner right from the word go. We'll be back with the big race, the World Championship, after this break. Here's Peugeot 205, very, very easy to spot. So too, car number 16, you're looking at there another one of the large French contingents, or reasonable French contingent here, Jean-Claude Brami. And uh, Jean-Claude down there on, uh, trying to spot the cameraman now, never mind where he is on the grid, because we haven't got a grid sheet, of course. Outside of row two, almost completely hidden from your sight there. There's one of the inside radiators. That's on uh, the German car of car number one, Otto Riedersel. As they go away, radiators inside to try and keep the carnage going as long as possible. Oh, and incidentally, do you want to know why the oval is only 200 metres long? The oval is only 200 metres long, so it is, in the words of the organisers, an uh, embouteillage permanent, a permanent traffic jam, and also to stop the drivers going too fast, bearing in mind, of course, they're going to hit things a lot. So the uh, starting grid, in uh, no particular order there, I'm afraid, it seems to be working pretty much from front to back, but car number 21, second of our Manx entries, of Salva Katia is right at the back. And emerging ahead, 32, 17, 5 and 28, 32 and 17 collide. And yellow flags everywhere because there is enormous carnage at the first turn. Upside down, Daniel Zellweger, the Swiss, car number 33, and this is how it happened. And a perfect caber toss there, initiated by Clive Hardy from England, car number four. Superb stuff there is the Swiss's teammate, car 32, and I make him the leader. 17, I'd say second, depending on which part of the lap we're looking at. 17 being punted really wide, that will teach him to abandon the mini. He could have made it through that gap otherwise. Oh, and Durring is stuck, very firmly stuck between the Maxman and his teammate, and a multi-car show going on behind him. And car number four, Clive Hardy from Great Britain, from England, doing a stunning job of trying to take everybody out of the race. There he is, right on the left-hand corner of the screen, car four, there he is, in amongst it. Let's see, Durring, 32, the leader, don't believe that for a moment, so 28 shots the Dutchman, maybe. I'd say car number five has got to be up there as well. 17, they reckon now, is in second place. I don't believe that either, since he's had a monumental one. Oh dear, no. Don't tell me that Clive Hardy's out of it. Surely that can't be the case. 17, they reckon is doing well. Patrick Vigor, cameras have picked him up. I question that a little bit, but mind you, almost everybody else seems to be stationary, so... And another roll, no bad news for Scottish fans, I'm afraid. Out of it goes Jack McBarber, he's on his side. 
there he is. Gentle, oh, they're both out on the same corner at the same top. I didn't even spot that. Oh, Rob McBarber out of it as well. So there'll be disappointment in the Highlands tonight, I'm afraid, as drivers. Rather unwisely, in my opinion, abandon their cars. Not a good move when the rest of the field is reversing and shunting around all over the place. And they're all racing. They are racing still. Drivers are trying to get out, but they're racing. Monumental pile up at the bottom corner there is car number 15, and that's Michel LeBur. I figured that he might have been uh, somewhere or thereabouts. And car number 24 now, Ornella Ruggieri, the Italian lady in her Alto Bianchi. Going very well indeed. Scoreboard doesn't think so, but she's setting a blistering pace out on her own. Michel LeBur still trying to find some way. There has uh, the Alto Bianchi gone past him. There is the Swiss, car number 32, still running, Urs Renhardt. And they, uh, well they call him Willy During on the scoreboard, but uh, they reckon 32 might be leading. Well, I'm not sure that we can argue with them either. And he's got a fan club here as well, so they'll beat me up if I uh, don't agree with them. There's the Dutchman, 28. Scoreboard has him off the lead trio. Very excitable French contingent right in front going mental. Can't quite figure out. Ow! One of the Scots is back in it. Excellent. Car number seven, Rob McBarber reversing around the track. Now he's going forwards again. He's got the engine running again on the escort. And he's right in front of the Dutchman. Oh, and hunted out of action. The French are going mental. They love it here. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Those of you who didn't grow up in Great Britain in the 70s, uh, the name Stuart Hall uh, may not make much to you, but uh, I'm afraid there is so much going on out of sight of the campus that um, we may very well re resort to a purely and uh, entirely Stuart Hall commentary at the moment. Let me update you on the situation. Well, car number two, they reckon, is leading. And that, uh, according to our entry list, is uh, Jürgen Hirsch, uh, but apparently is Asia Wussau. Uh, he's German anyway. Uh, although, of course, he's got a Swiss cross on the roof. So, uh, goodness only knows what's going on. Car number one is still moving. Uh, one of the Swiss cars, 32, is still moving as well. And they reckon that... Uh, during car number 32 might be in second place. I uh, can't see how car number two is anywhere at all because he's been stationary in that same traffic jam down there for a couple of minutes. The uh, oh no, oh no, I'm sorry, Rob is abandoning ship now. Robert Barber finally bailing out. How many still moving? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cars still moving, including the Luxembourg driver 27 who's just about to appear in shock. No, they the camera and our maximum car number 21 who we've barely seen all evening salva Caccia, still running oh no car number 18 is uh, on three wheels but only on four wheels but only three of them have got inflated tires car number 15 michelle lebeur is settling scores by reversing around and there's the escort with the door flapping of the manxman cashier ahead of car number two who may now be second they reckon billy donning in 32 has overtaken him and i'd say that's got to be a fair bet 18 there he is with the flat tire and battered everything else the only straight thing on the car is the bottom of the tyre. I'm afraid the Alto Bianchi has bitten the dust as well. So Helmut Vischau in car number two, I read on his door. There he is with the Swiss cross going through. The scoreboard claims him to be German. Roof of the car says otherwise. So it could be a Swiss one too, unbelievably. 32 leads two. 27 through goes there. Through the narrow gap, the Luxembourg driver. And uh, he is uh, well, in the colours of Luxembourg, but that is Jackie Foyard, the man with the really multicolour spray job from earlier on in the evening. Picks up a Portuguese, a Medigo Marquette, a Medigo in a Fiat Strada, a Ritmo on the Continong here. And of course, he was in uh, Alfetta earlier, wasn't he? So, uh, Portuguese who likes his Italianate machinery. 
car number one, one of the nicest looking cars before this started, is the German driver Otto Riedersel. Not been faring particularly well. And Jackie there going through, he likes that banking around the outside. He knows that there's always a way through there, unless the Portuguese blocks it. Still eight, now nine cars going. Oh, and the Portuguese is trying to get somebody else going. The Portuguese 31 on the far side of the circuit here has picked up car 17. Patrick Vigor, the ex-miniman, and is trying to get him going. Oh, and he gets shunted by the German and by Jackie Feuillard. Car number 18, the second of the Hungarian engines, is, is uh, trying to restart. That's Tibor. He's got two flat tyres and helpfully on the Golf, both of them at the front. So he has uh, little in the way of steering, little in the way of power and a lot in the way of vibration. The flag is out, the checkered flag is out. 26 and laps on the scoreboard, whoever knows how many on the track. And they're patting the driver of car number 32 on the shoulder, which either means, oi son, you're out of this ball game, or Billy Herring is uh, Billy Doring. <laughs> Billy Dorring is the winner for Switzerland. And if the camera would pan round momentarily, they could see his fan club in the background. They're going to now because he's off to see him. Hello, Mum. Ah, oh, Moti, Fati. <laughs> he is in fact not worthy, but he is. He is <laughs> the winner of the Championnat du Monde. Here at Barry Bercy. Well, I can agree with that this time. I don't think the scoreboard may be entirely out of uh, out of line on that one. Uh, he's getting uh, <laughs> Swiss flags waving as ZZ Top go uh, into it for the 14th time this evening on the PA, and uh, well, the French camera crews go to interview the 14th place finisher or the 9th place finisher, Jackie Fiard. I think about the only man going who had been uh, sitting still for about 10 minutes. The cars are crying enough. Car number two, Helmut Vussel, was second, and car number one, they reckon...